Hi, welcome to Home Farm. Today we're gonna to share with you how we got our home sewage treatment plant back into good health, looking really great, functioning efficiently, and how we did that in an environmentally friendly and natural way. Victorian farmhouse a couple of years ago and uh, the previous owners had renovated it and they had put in a home sewage treatment plant. Mm. What kind of home sewage treatment plant is it? Uh, it's called a Vortex uh, and it's quite important to make the distinction that it is a home sewage treatment plant and not a septic tank oh. because it's not a septic tank it's completely different it uses technology to basically pump air bubbles through the system which basically uh, allows bacteria to flourish and to basically break down house matter inside the tank. So the home sewage treatment plant we have, because of the air, aeration and the air bubbles and everything else, yeah. it kind of tends to look after itself. It does. And it is a more kind of sustainable um, home sewage treatment plant option. It is, but you still have to look after it. You can't be flushing stuff that you shouldn't be. So everything that you can't flush into a septic tank, also we can't flush into ours. Uh, so you still got to be very cautious. You need to limit the amount of antibacterial stuff that you're introducing into the tank, because ultimately it's the bacteria inside the tank that are breaking all of that organic matter down that you flush down the toilets and that basically goes down the kitchen sink. Uh, so basically you have to look after those. Yeah, just to go back. So with regards to um, a septic tank or a home sewage treatment, we'll focus on the home sewage treatment yeah. plant because that's what we've got. Um, we really don't want to be putting anything in that is not biodegradable or cannot break down naturally itself Correct. or is hard to break down. Yeah. So it might be natural. So you might think, for example, coconut oil is natural yeah. um, and you might think that that's fine or coffee granules is fine. I'll just, you know, keep flushing it or pushing it down through the kitchen sink. Yeah. Actually, no, that's not great. So there really is a very specific amount of mm -hmm. things that we are not allowed to put down the sinks and down the toilets. And I think that's a general misconception by people thinking, well, now, for example, if you've cooked something and you've got like little pieces of onion or, you know, food that's left over, you think, well, that's okay for it to go down the drain. You should actually be catching those too. Oh. Uh, despite those being natural, you're just uh, introducing more solids into your tank that if you can imagine little bacteria having to break down a little piece of onion or vegetable is just not something that it takes, that, a, long time. It takes a long time and mm. you, you're basically just adding more of a burden. Uh, to that tank so basically so no solids other than what obviously goes down the toilet there should be no additional solids that actually flushed and as you said fats is a really really bad one so why is uh, fats and oils really bad for the tank uh to my understanding the reason that 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 they are bad is because oil is oil and it doesn't really mix with stuff so when you're actually flushing things down uh, the toilet that actually get the the oil mixes with those and it basically contributes more to creating the sludge layer in our tank uh, and I assume the same thing happens inside septic tanks where it just basically fuses and merges with everything uh, kind of the, the problem that they have in London with these fatbergs uh, yeah. through the sewage treatment uh, uh, through, or through the sewage canals yeah uh, it's that fat that basically just latches onto everything and the water can't break it down so it, it's kind of the same concept mm, uh, inside okay. a septic tank so we're really careful. We don't deep fry. We don't no. um, do anything. And if we do do oils, we, we dispose of it in a different way. We don't just flush it yeah. or, or push it down the kitchen sink. One of the easiest ways to do that is just to have a kitchen towel. Uh, so if you have uh, used the wok, for example, and it's a bit oily, just wipe that with the kitchen towel, throw it away. And then obviously you can wash that down to, to get the whatever oil Residual. is left on there, mm. you can wash it down, but just try and limit as much of that oil as you possibly can. So when we moved into the property a couple of years ago, um, that was August 2018, mm -hmm. um, the previous owners um, said that they had had the tank cleaned and emptied um, professionally. Mm -hmm. um, however, when we started to have problems with the tank in January 2020, um, a lot of the professionals and experts that came out um, to evaluate the situation, try and point us in the right direction, tell us what was going wrong with the tank, um, a lot of those people came to the conclusion that the tank had yeah. not uh, previously been emptied. Um, so that had not that had not happened. So no. that really didn't help us. And then obviously there was the start of COVID. Now we share our tank with our neighbors. Yeah. So it's two households using one tank. 
And uh, with COVID, of course, there's been such a massive increase in the use of antibacterial products, uh -huh. um, whether it's sanitizing gels or um, sprays, anti-vac sprays, etc. So a lot of that, uh, those products have ended up making their way into the tank. We've been extremely limited yeah. in, in what we've used, and I've tended to try and go down more natural routes where I can, obviously not everywhere, but where I uh -huh. can. So, you know, like using uh, white vinegars and um, citric acids and things like that. But it is not, it's impossible to completely avoid it um, yeah. with COVID. Um, now we're starting to get in more into a different swing of things. So I think that we are um, being better about what we use. But certainly at the beginning, uh, everybody was really nervous. And so yeah. the, we were just, everybody was using it. That basically led to us having major problems. Yeah. And in January, February, we had a lot of people out here. They tested the water, they looked at the tank and they came to the conclusion that that had been a major contributing factor. Definitely. And that the tank, uh, because of all the anti-back and bleach and everything else that had been pushed into the system, it had l basically nuked all the good bacteria in the tank and so the, the tank was really not able to help itself and break mm. down what it was supposed to be breaking down. It's just like thinking about your gut health and yeah. thinking about how you, you actually really do want good bacteria and probiotics in your tummy to help break down your foods and all of those kind of things. And so it's the kind of same, same thing with the home sewage tank, isn't it? Totally. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of people get freaked out by the word bacteria, I think a lot of the time. So it is actually very important that there is a lot of good bacteria uh, in the tank. Uh, and you need to do, as I said earlier, you have to do everything that you can to foster and allow those bacteria to thrive so that they can make your tank as healthy as possible. So we had the tank emptied pretty much straight away. We had it uh, had a, a company come out, they emptied it and they cleaned it. And they said, okay, let's just reset you right yeah. from go. Let's just clean everything out, um, give it, uh, start reset you basically. Yeah. So that's what we did. And they said, now you've been reset and you've had everything cleaned out. You really shouldn't have any problems and everything should run fine. That was in February. Mm -hmm. And then by March or April, things started to go wrong again. Yeah. And it wasn't that it was coming into the house or anything nasty like that but Mars was regularly checking on it and he was opening up the top and checking to see that it was functioning well and the bubbles were doing their thing yeah. and everything was you know swirling in the right directions and again it started to choke up and it started to have problems all over again. Yeah the, the sludge layer basically had started to form which is what you don't want to have happen in a home sewage treatment plant. So as soon as that starts to happen at a very quick rate, you start to realize that the bacteria and the actual system is out of sync and something is not working the way that it should, uh, which basically prompted us to try and find an alternative and a solution. So obviously we shouldn't need people to come, be coming out regularly and completely no. emptying out the tank. That's not um, how the tank should work. No. Um, it should be a very rare occurrence. I mean, once, ev once oh, every It should what, take like, years. I mean, in our years. case, with, with the size of tank that we have, and the amount of people that use it. I mean, this tank should be getting emptied once a decade, once every 15 years. It really shouldn't be happening with the regularity uh, that we've certainly experienced up until this point. So you went away and researched, and I think you've seen um, this advertised in Garden as well magazine. Yeah. And we got a leaflet through the post. Um, and you came across a natural environmentally product mm -hmm. called Muck Bunches. Which is this product here. And you uh, reached out to that company and they um, actually gifted us Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, some packs. Yeah. It, this is not, there was not any agreement with regards to us having to do reviews or us having to give positive reviews at all. It was purely, here you go, yeah. try this and see if it works. Um, and so this is really just us giving you our honest yeah. um, experience mm -hmm. and sharing that with you. Mm -hmm. So this is the starter pack that was given to us. It's got a, a, a booster kit and then 12 sachets that you use throughout the course of a year. We've already done a video on this uh, earlier, which basically where we discussed the product, uh, how we flushed it and, and all of that. So we're not gonna get into that now. If you wanna see that video, we'll put up a, a little link up here. In this video, it's now been three months since we've been using Muck Munchers, and we wanted to share with you whether they've actually done the trick and whether they have restored our tank to a healthier state. So what we did before actually introducing the first of the sachets is we took a water sample from our tank from the aerobic side of it, so the, the area where uh, basically all the bubbles uh, go through it. We took that sample and we sent it to a lab uh, to get evaluated. So why do we do that? 
uh, we did that to basically find out uh, what the various levels of things were in our tank to get a baseline uh, in terms of, so there was nothing in the tank, that was basically the way our tank was operating. And that gave us a baseline reading for stuff in our tank. What we then did is we continued to flush the muck munchers down the toilets for the better part of three months. Uh, and then Once a month. Once a month. It's really easy. I mean, you literally take a sachet yeah. and go to a different toilet every time. Yeah. So you go take a sachet, throw it in, and give it 10 minutes and then flush it. I mean, it's just so simple oh, and easy. It's very you don't easy need to, to do go it. out to your tank, you don't need to fiddle with the tank. It's just super, super efficient. It's a really great solution, to be honest. So we did that for three months, uh, and then we went and took another water reading, uh, which we basically you know, extracted, and we sent that to the lab to then get uh, a new result to see whether, over the course of three months, whether the muck munches had started to work. The one thing that we did notice almost immediately is that the sludge uh, layer on the side started to, de to deteriorate and vanish. So we could already see visually that something good was happening in the tank because we went from having a sludge layer of, I would probably guess, maybe 15 centimeters to... Which is basically like, um, if you don't know what a sludge layer is, basically where everything that's um, not soluble or um, heavier matter floats to the top and really kind of builds up yeah. and starts to become what it, it sounds like, crusty and horrible and gunky. Yeah. You know, you really want that sludge layer to be either nothing or very, very, very small. Well, ideally you don't want it at all. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it has to over time form though, because even over the course of 10 or 15 years in a tank that is working well, you will get to a point where the bacteria can't actually break down what's in there any further and that sludge layer will form. But in our case, it was very worrying that it happened over the course of just a couple of months, which is not supposed to do. I mean, that's supposed to be years to get to that point. Right. So, you know, we're very happy that that's broken down. And also now when you actually open the tank, uh, not that the tank ever smells, uh, but you, you do get an unpleasant odor when the tank's not working correctly. Now it, you just get an earthy smell. It just smells like you're working soil. with soil or earth. It's, it's actually, it's not an, it's an inoffensive smell. Uh, and that is an indicator that the tank is actually operating uh, very well. So what exactly is muck munches? Because obviously it's natural and environmentally friendly, but what is it? Uh, it's a strain of four different bacteria. I can't remember what they are, but basically all they've done is I think there are 50 billion, I'm just reading the packaging, there are 50 billion microbes in each sachet. Wow. Uh, so basically you're just introducing bacteria at a crazy rate into your tank just to give it a boost so that they can actually just start breaking down the things that, that are in there. Um, the formulation is I think what's key to, to muck munches is they've selected four uh, bacteria that are each kind of specialists in their field. So one that you know deals with fats, one that deals with something else. Oh, really? So those four working together is basically what allows them to complement each other and to break down the stuff that ultimately ends up in your tank. Bacteria superheroes. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Like a little X-Men yeah. thing going on in our tank. <laughs> <laughs> so apart from the tank looking very healthy, we have got our lab results. Uh, we're not going to get into them now. It's quite technical, but I know that there have been a few people uh, that have been following us that have requested us to actually do the lab uh, tests. So we will put that on our blog. I'll put the link at the bottom. Uh, and then I'll also put a little bit of a summary to explain uh, some of the fluctuations and differences in numbers between the, the two reports okay. uh, to, to give you a further explanation as to if you are thinking about doing your own lab test, at least that'll allow you to demystify some of these really random abbreviations and numbers. So what did these final lab results tell us? Uh, ultimately, without getting into too much detail, it's shown us that our tank has improved. It improved? It has improved. No, no, it proved that it had improved. It, it's proved that it's improved. <laughs> there was a, a proven improvement on our tank, uh, which is obviously something that we'd already been able to see visually. Yeah, uh, but so, it's good to get the science to tell but us But it is good it to know that. And we also now have um, a ratio that basically shows us where we are and how much uh, room for deterioration we can have on our tank in order for it to still operate correctly. So oh, wow. if you have more guests or more people that come and stay with you, obviously it puts a bigger burden on the tank. Yeah. So we're actually well below where we should be now. Hmm. So it, it is something that, that is really great. So even though we have a home sewage treatment plant, there's obviously a lot more people in the UK that have got septic tanks. Hmm. I think that the biggest benefit of these is that from what I've read online is that a lot of septic tanks get blocked in the soak away because they 
get overburdened with the sludge and the fat that is actually in there. Oh. So by introducing a, a product such as muck munchers, uh, it actually will bring that under control and it will prevent any soak away problems that you might encounter at some stage, which is quite an, a, an expensive exercise because ultimately you have to get somebody in you have to dig around the septic tank, try and find mm. where, the, where the blockages are. Mm. So, you know, given that this is not an expensive product. I, that was the thing that I'm most impressed about. The yeah. fact that, you know, it's natural, it's really simple to use. And for me, I think it's so cost effective. Fair when you think about how much you could potentially end up in bills yeah. with regards to people coming with big tanks or investigating or, you know, doing a whole bunch of maintenance on the tanks. Um, I think that it's yeah. just so cost effective. I think a packet is like 35 pounds. So I mean, 35 pounds for a year's supply of natural, um, environmentally friendly um, bacteria that you know is just going to keep your tank operating Super smoothly. Healthy. It's just a no-brainer for us. When we had our tank emptied in our area with the providers that we used, uh, it cost us £150. Mm, 150 to 170 Is that the going rate? Yeah. Okay. So that, that's what it cost us. And the way that we were actually heading, uh, we would have had to have emptied this tank again probably this year. Yeah. So the fact that you can introduce a product that is costing around £35 yeah. uh, versus spending £150 uh, again, uh, and avoiding any potential soak away problems that you could have, which I would imagine will go into hundreds or not thousands of pounds, yeah. I think is just a, a pretty sensible solution yeah. uh, to, to use. So overall, I've been really impressed. Um, so Muck Munchers is that product, but it's from a company called BioGuard. So BioGuard um, also have a bunch of home cleaning products, which are also um, have got the back good bacteria in them and are environmentally friendly. Mm. For example, I've used their bleach and it's fantastic because it has zero smell um, which is amazing for a bleach yeah. um, so that's really really nice to use and they've got a floor cleaner which I tried and a fat dissolvable solution as well um, which has all got this good bacteria in. For us we've always used natural and yeah. eco-friendly products anyway um, where we can I'd say 90% of the time that's mm. what we use um, but it does make sense if you're having tank issues yeah. and you um, put something like a Mac Munchers in there to introduce that good bacteria it is also worth taking some time to just have an overview and review of mm. your cleaning products and think, okay, hold on a minute, what else am I putting in here? Because it's kind of defeatist to put that good bacteria back into the tank yeah. and then suddenly, you know, 10 minutes later, go into your bathroom and put a whole bunch of bleach in and a whole bunch of, you know, dental, all that kind of stuff and flush that into mm. the system because you're literally just killing what you've just put in. Yeah. So it's really important to just think about your tank as a kind of cohesive, holistic kind of system of like everything that you use even your hair products you know think about um, you know shampoos uh, and, soaps and yeah shampoos soaps um all those kind of things think about that so just i would just say that that would be my top tip is if you're having tank issues get those re issues resolved if munches is the right product for you definitely try that because yeah. for us it's been brilliant and then go through your household and actually think okay what else Am I putting into the system that's not helping us um, with regards to cleaning and um, skincare and personal products? Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue monitoring our tank. I go and check up on it uh, once a week. Uh, what we'll do again in the new year is we'll take another sample. Mm. Uh, so that basically means it'll be about six months since we started flushing them and we'll see if there's any further improvement in our tank. Not that there's an awful lot more to improve, but it'll just be interesting to see whether it actually maintains at the levels that we're at, mm -hmm. whether the, the, the new products that we're using in the home and all those kind of things are all working cohesively and together. Mm -hmm. And that will give us a far better idea of whether we're continuing on the right track. So if you're having tank issues, I would definitely say take a look at your bacteria and evaluate that that might be a good starting point um, I think that we're all about mm. good bacteria now and um, Munch has been a bit of a game changer for That's us so um, I hope you found this video useful and interesting uh, we will have another video about this coming up in January? I, I, I think we'll do another lab test in January okay. so in the new year I think we'll do yet another follow-up to this uh, series of videos yeah uh, so if you don't want to miss out on that please subscribe and ring the bell um, in between that if you want to keep up to date with us on a more regular basis we're yeah. also on Instagram and on our blog um, you yeah. write a lot of um, detailed um, uh, updates on we that. get a bit more technical on the blog than we do on the videos yeah so if you want to check that out yeah. as well and uh, we hope you all subscribe and ring the bell and we'll yeah. see you on our next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.